Alrighty, hi guys, I'm back here again. Today I'll be playing Esper Familiars. Um, I saw this build that uh, uh, I think Erblinski started playing, so he played it in a challenge and he did pretty well, so I'm trying it out. I did some changes though, um, also based on some changes that simplified it, so it's kind of a joint effort here to try to make this deck work. So. Esper Familiars is more like uh, similar to uh, Blue White uh, FU, created also by Simplify. So the idea of the deck is not to combo off, and there aren't any uh, you win the game combos in this deck. Um, you can gain infinite life with uh, Faithful, Archaeomancer, and Flicker. If you have two Familiars, you can Flicker Island and Archaeomancer for neutral mana and gain life each time with Horse Feral Faithful. I need to put the the preview pane there, awesome. With this card, so each each time you cast the flicker, you gain a life, and flicker can target one of your lands. Uh, and if you have two of these on play, then your costly flicker costs only one blue mana. So you flicker Archaeomancer, Archaeomancer gets back flicker. You also flicker one island, so you generate one mana because you tap the island for mana, then it comes untapped when it gets flicker. So that's kind of the only weird combo there is. There is also another combo with um, Ghostly Flicker, Archaeomancers, like two Archaeomancers, and Snap. You can Flicker two Archaeomancers, um, getting Flicker and Snap, then you snap one of the opponent's creatures and tapping two lands. And in all that cycle, you spent five mana, so you need to generate with Snap um, uh, five mana to, to untap. So if you have like one familiar, now that that all whole cycle goes to three, so if you have two bounce lands, each snap generates three mana. So you are able to just combo. But you need two um, bounce lands in play, Ghost of Figure, Stansky, Familiar, and two Archimancers. So it's kind of a niche combo. The main way this deck wins is by just ephemerating Archimancer, getting back anything to just loop uh, and stop the opponent from doing anything. Uh, then you have also Moldrifter and the Roba Horror, similar to how Tron wins, which is to flicker these guys and generate a lot of value, mostly answering what the opponent does, but you can also just draw a lot of cards. Uh, with the Roba, since you can target the opponent's permanence, you can just remove all their permanents through a period of time, not infinitely, not in one turn. And yeah, that's the idea. So the first build from Kerblinksy had a similar mana base to this, but with less cantrips. Uh, at first I tried fixing the mana, but it ended up having too many tap lands. So instead I removed two cast downs for more cantrips. This way, this way we can keep hands with uh, mostly blue mana and not of, are off colors and try to find them with the cantrips. We don't need a lot of cast downs since we have also got fair safeful. I want to have an answer to a catch all answer in the main. So I'm going to have one cast down in the main, two cast downs in the sideboard. Um, so that way we can answer like problematic creatures that we want to kill and that we can't snap for example because uh, uh, and we, that we can't snap or we can't ignore by gaining that. Uh, most of the creatures in the format though uh, kind of have an ETV like Sigitora or Archaeomancer and then the body doesn't really care, doesn't, it isn't important or the body is important but you can gain just a lot of life with Faithful and just ignore it. So yeah, that's kind of the idea. Having one of these in the main means that we have the out to just find it and loop it, similar to how we have the out to finding a counter spell and loop it with Archaeomancer and Flicker, or Archaeomancer and Ephemerate. So that's more or less the, the idea of this deck, so I'm going to start a league here. Uh, on the sideboard I'm going to have two more worlds. This is great versus um, kind of card advantage decks. You can just uh, ephemerate this to make the opponent discards a lot of a lot of cards and just put another creature in play that can pressure the opponent while they not, don't have answers because they discard the whole hand basically. Uh, it's really expensive, so this is mostly for attrition matches, I, I assume. Ripping the Graves is great for removal spam kind of decks. Um, this is very difficult to answer profitably for the opponent. 
but it's um, and also it's a way to just record all of your creatures besides just the mortuary mirror, which is one of your main deck. Then we have cast downs, for example, for fairy decks where you want to respond to the trigger. Uh, also, so for getting pumps for the same reason, and also for elves and other X ones. Stone for dignitary for decks that also are trying to ignore everything and just try to kill us as soon as possible, like boggles and heroic. We can just lock them out of the uh, combat phase very quickly with this. This guy is also a lot of time versus them, so we maybe have uh, the out to just play this, then jump block a couple of times, then find a way to just lock them out of combat. Again, this is something that you could have like one off in your main deck. Uh, for example, if you wanted to play like blue white, you could remove the Dean Robas and just play this. Uh, I wanted to test the row and see how it works. Also, we have a better cyborg because we have answers to some other uh, problems that blue white can answer, like for example, uh, creatures, right? Uh, blue white has the problem of answering creatures at instant speed. Uh, yeah, so most of the cards that you have in that slot are kind of wonky and don't really work. So cast down is really good at that. Also, since we are trying to um, not win the game in one turn with a combo. The Roa Horror helps a lot with this because you can just answer their board very efficiently in a couple of turns and then start bashing them with a 4-4. So it makes a really good win condition. Uh, then we have Low Missionary for aggro and burn and negates as a way of, uh, again, the kind of the matchups where you need more counter magic or maybe prohibits are bad. Uh, you can bring in the gates. Um, I think that we are missing here is just more raw card advantage in the sideboard. So this is something I was wondering if you wanted, for example, another deep analysis in the sideboard or something like that to just um, mitigate, for example, this card from the opponent on, or just, like, again, if the matchup is about card advantage, um, we need to keep our wheels turning because we have so many cards that don't country like Sunscape Familiar, Godfather of Faithful, Castle, Counter Spells, Snaps. All of these cards are awesome, but they don't country and don't generate card advantage. So you need to have a way of refueling. Even though it looks like a pile of card draw, it isn't really that case, and you can uh, sometimes just float out. So it's important to have more card advantage in the sideboard. Um, but I'm going to try this. Um, and see how it works. So yeah, thanks for listening and let's go to the matches.